and everybody. And welcome to a rather cold Thursday morning. And what better way to start the cold morning's work if you're a nice hot cup of tea. So let's go and have a quick look round the plot and show you what's been going on. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a little plot tour this morning, just to show you what's been going on, uh, what I've been doing, what's growing, what's not growing, and just enlighten you what I'm going to try and achieve today on the plot. We're going to start up the top end, where the hut is. We're going to start with the bed down here. I don't know if you can see in there through the netting. This is the garlic that I put in a few weeks ago. Let's take that off of there. There we go, they're all coming up nicely. I think these were the soft neck ones. I'm not too sure, I'll have to check. I'll have to check my little book. But these are either the soft neck or the hard neck. <laughs> we'll work our way up the left hand side and then come down the right. Not a lot going on in the brassica bed. Leaves are starting to fall off in there, off the some of the brassicas. Got a few bits of purple sprouting broccoli coming through, which is nice. Still not a lot of activity on the the purple Brussels sprouts, but the green ones are still growing away like mad. We managed to get a bit more manure on here, another little stack over here. That'll be for this bed once I get that cleared. Nothing on here. Now I have got some pegs which I'm going to actually peg this down at some point and try and get rid of all these bits of wood and bricks and that that are holding the sheeting down. But that might be for another day. And in this bed, the other garlic, every bulb has come up Going along nicely. Moving along. Now we did have these down the back end where the composting area is. But I've decided to move them. Put them along the edge of the path here. I think it looks a lot better. So we've got four of the globe artichokes. And in the middle... We've got the two blackberry bushes. Swing you around to where the beans were. Now, the Japanese onions, some of them are starting to poke their heads up. But we'll see, we'll see what happens with them. Another couple over the back, little row over the back there coming up. And over, over here, more manure. <laughs> more manure and some more <laughs> haven't really done anything on this bed we've had a little fire another fire over there which cleared all the top growth so over the next couple of months I need to go through and dig all that the asparagus bed all the ferns have gone brown so we've chopped them off just above ground level and give them a light dressing of manure. Now these have been in for two years now so next year we should be getting a good picking of them. I put the netting over the top for the simple reason I found that something's been digging holes in there. Um, so I put the netting over the top and that'll keep that nice and safe from any intruders. 
Now on to the bit I want to tackle today. Yesterday I, I come over yesterday for a couple of hours. Done a bit of work over the back there. Dug out a bit more. Now the, the bindweed down this side is absolutely horrific. It took me ages to dig all that lot up. But we've got some more manure as well, which is for this bed. When I get this dug over today, I need to get this bed covered today. So the idea is I'm going to get all the parsnips up. Take them home, give them a little blanch and pop them in the freezer. So then I can manure this bed and get it covered. Because I don't actually think I've done any covering and manuring on this way for one, one thing or another for the last two or three years. So I think this year I'm going to go all out and get it all ready, done properly for next season. So let's make a start. First bit dug over. Um, I think it's time for a quick cup of tea and have a quiet five minutes before we start the next bit. Well, that was a well earned cup of tea. Now I think it's time to push on with the next bit. talk about vegetables but most specifically let's get the tray root vegetables and as I said earlier I've got to get these parsnips out so I can finish this bed off I've got the wrong, I've got the Sun on the wrong side of me again I've got my shadow Just stick the little tray down there now root vegetables carrot pass such like and the most, probably the most mysterious vegetables of all because they're not like cabbages you can see what's above the ground you don't know until you dig them up what you're going to get now the general rule of thumb is you, you can put your finger in and have a little rummage around the top the problem with that is where you think you've got a nice big top on it you're going to get a nice big parsnip it doesn't always work that way. And other things, unlike things like trees and bushes, they tend to say that whatever is above the ground is below the ground in roots, which in the case of trees is true. So I've led the belief. But it's not the case with root vegetables. So let's grab your fork and let's dig these up and see what we get. don't want to come up. Well, if that's as good as it's going to get, I think I'm on a loser. We're getting a little bit better.
I'll finish getting these up and I'll be back in a bit. And there you go. Not a bad little harvest. They got a little bit better as they went along. Not much. Although there was a couple of surprises in there as well. Um, I'm going to go and get these washed up and I'll, I'll, I'll be back in a minute and show you the results. It's nice just to get your hands around a hot cup of tea. That water was freezing. Oh, anyway. There you go. Like I said, lots of different lots of different sizes. Nothing nothing great. I don't think I'm gonna win the biggest parsnip competition on the plot this year. But we've got some that were quite surprising when we took them out. Another one there. A few little uh, obscure ones. A little bit of canker on some of them. But these will get a good wash when I get them home. I've got some little ones there that are not actually going to do anything. So they'll get washed and they'll get fed to the rabbits. They'll enjoy them. Yeah, these are destined for the freezer. Basically, I'll just clean them. I won't peel them. I never do peel them. Just give them a little scrub. Give them a quick look. Five seconds. Hot water. Then straight into ice water. Bag them up. Stick them in the freezer. I also have a backup. That wasn't the only ones that I've put in this year. I have put a couple of rows in at home, which I'm going to leave in until mid-December, end of December. Um, hopefully, they might be a bit better. So I'm going to finish my cup of tea. I'm going to crack on with digging the rest of that lot up. I'm not going to film it, because I think you've seen me doing enough digging for one day. So, I'll catch up with you when I'm done. Well... That's that bed all dug over. Got sorted out the manure as well, got that laid on. Had a little bit too much on this bed, so I've, I've wheelbarrowed some of it up and stuck it down right down the end over the back there for that for that next plot. So I think all it leaves me to do now is to get it covered up. Got me roller covering. Oh yeah, while I was digging through, I found another two parsnips. A little bonus. As I was saying, this weed fabric I bought in the summer. Now, I got it pretty cheaply, to be fair, because uh, I've looked online over the weekend and the price has shot up quite a lot. So, and the prices do vary. So it's worth, it's worth shopping around for this. This is the 100 GSM. I think it's called GSM. Um, you can get 125 or 150, but again, the higher the, the higher the GSM on it, the more you pay. So I think I've just about got enough left on this roll to get the to get this last bed done, and I may have to get some more for the other two beds. So let's get cracking on that. And that's another job done. That's all not. It's all nicely down. I put some extra little pegs in the middle just to give it a little more stability. Now the beauty of this stuff, as opposed to tarpaulin, is it suppresses all the weeds, the same as the tarpaulin, but this is porous, so it'll let the water in as well, so that the ground doesn't dry out. So yeah, quite pleased with a day's work. And that's three beds done out of four. One over these two have already covered. This one here has been dug but I'll need covering once I'm finished with the brassica cage. Now if you noticed earlier, I don't know if you picked up on it or not, I was using two buckets for the weeding. And this is the reason why. I mentioned the bindweed earlier. Now, roots from bindweed 
you can't put in the compost. They, they'll just regrow. So all I do is a separate bucket for the buying weeds. These are just the roots left now. The rest, all the top growth I've ripped off and I burnt yesterday. There's a few other little roots and bits in there, but primarily buying weed. It travels underneath, travels underneath the ground and then just pops up here, there and everywhere. I'm going to leave these out for a few days to dry off um, and then just burn them. It's the only way to get rid of them. So that's about it. Had a very busy day today, got quite a lot done. The, the sun's gone in, it's starting to get a little bit chilly again now, so I just want to thank all the new subscribers that have joined the last couple of weeks and a goodbye to the ones that I've lost over the last couple of weeks. But anyway, it's their loss, not yours. So until next time, take care and I'll be back very soon. Bye bye for now.